Our co-host, the Admiral Bill Stebblefield, two-star. Good morning, Rob. And I've been told not to talk about turtles this time. We're getting that girl a turtle. <laughs> also, Maria Lawrence, all-star. Good morning. Great to have you both with us. Always a pleasure. We're cutting off the top of your head right now, Maria. Move your camera back about six inches or so. Because right now, yes. we're, we've lost the top of your skull. Is it better now? It's oh, getting, no. It's it's still clear back there. Yeah, that's a, what, is that better? Yeah, we just need to tilt it up some. Okay. How about that? This is the drawback. When, after the commercial break starts, the room scatters yeah. like cockroaches when you turn the light on in the kitchen. In some people's houses. Not mine, of course. <laughs> And uh, and everything gets all discombobulated. So then, like Colin starts yelling, 15 seconds!" And everybody sprints to their seat, and then you got to readjust. Just what goes on behind the scenes here. <laughs> yes. And some need more readjustment than others. Amen. Some, yeah. some. Melissa Power left here begging us to stop talking about getting a turtle for her daughter. So of course we're starting a GoFundMe page to get yeah. Melissa's yeah. daughter a new turtle. Yeah. Well, her first turtle, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. From Bill's uh, captured turtles at his house illegally. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm. I really appreciate Melissa being as open as frank as what she is. She, I thought she uh, she adds much to an interview. Well, it was interesting to watch the interaction with our next guest, um, former BOE member himself, who was a former, a long time BOE member, and some overheard suggestions and that's always helpful we go ahead and do the introduction this will be your first introduction well on the this would be rick pill um former board of ed member very um uh very involved person with wvu athletics with the foundation with the hospital with just about everything wvu good to see you rick thank you my pleasure nice to be here i saw the news yesterday about some new appointees to the foundation rick yeah, there are three new appointees on the foundation. Now, I, I am not on the foundation. I'm on the WVU Board of Governors, mm -hmm. but but they're, I would call it almost sister organizations. The, the foundation, of course, primarily raises funds for the university and helps the long-range planning and funding with the university, but they have three new uh, members that uh, I did just saw this morning, too. Yeah. Uh, in regards to the president's office, you know, we've been talking about Gordon Gee and a potential successor for a long time. A lot of names have been thrown out there, as will happen when there's a potential opening. What do you know about Gordon Gee, his, his, uh, his time frame at WVU, and what might happen next? Well, what I know about him, I think he's one of the best presidents that there is in the country and one of the best presidents that we've ever had here. And uh, his contract was up, but he was gracious enough to take another year um, so we could do a proper transition with a lot of things that are changing at the university. And so now we're in the middle of uh, the process of looking for and hiring a new president for West Virginia University. When will you start the interviewing phase of that? W what's happened on this um, starting back in January, w we had to... Uh, WVU used to run, be run by the HEPSI rules, the Higher Education Policy Commission, but now Marshall and WVU can set their own rules and regulations and procedures as long as they're within general parameters. So we've been doing that for the last couple of years with a little more self-governance for the two longest, largest universities. So in the spring, we set up the policies and procedures for hiring uh, and managing a president then we, um, our, our governance committee uh, went through and we've created a search committee. So the ultimate decision will be by the 15 Board of Governor members, but on a day-to-day -day basis, the, the uh, well, before we set up a search committee, we evaluated and uh, several different companies around the country that specialize in hiring. And so we had 14 applications. We narrowed it down. So we have hired a company called WITT, W-I-T-T, Kiefer, K-I-E-F-F-E-R, as our consulting and search firm, consulting and search firm. And I'll just go ahead and throw out now so I don't forget, they have a great organization. The lady that's leading our consulting team, in fact, was the president of the University of Iowa, for, for several years. Who is that, by the way? Lucy Lesky, L-E-S-K-E. And there's a four-person team. One on that team is John Thornburg, who was involved when we hired 
uh, the hospital system uh, leadership there with Albert Wright. So I will throw out now, if anybody has suggestions on presidential candidates, suggestions on the qualities and, and important uh, uh, matters that a president has to be familiar with, everybody, we're, we're trying to get as much input as possible from the public, uh, alumni, non-alumni, uh, citizens of the state. I mean, WVU is crucial to the operation of the state, and so uh, uh, with our land-grant mission. So Lucy Lesky's email is l-l-e-s-k-e at w-i-t-t k-i-e f-f-e-r dot com so that is where information generally is going to go through and w when you're having a search for a new president um, you can't have 20 different mouthpieces and and so privacy uh, is very very crucial in this so the search committee that we've set up uh, is, a, is a diverse search committee, and they'll be the ones working most closely with Whit Kiefer. They'll eventually come back with three finalists, and then the board itself, the Board of Governors, will get very, very involved at that point. And it'll be a long process. There's going to be a lot of uh, vetting. There's going to be public uh, listening sessions. There'll probably be one in Kaiser. There'll be several in Morgantown. There'll be one at WVU uh, Tech. Um, and so uh, the public will be there where they can put input as to what they think is important as far as the president is concerned, but not interviewing individual people. What's the market rate for a, a president of a university these days, salary-wise? Um, with inflation, the way we've had in the last 10 or 20 years? Um, it will vary dramatically. It's not like somebody that has an hourly job um, it'll matter on their credentials, and that will be negotiated when we get down to the finalists. But there, there are, uh, so if you look at your CEOs of major companies, I mean, you know you're talking tens of millions of dollars. So we're talking about somebody, remember WVU's in charge of the WVU health system too. That's the largest employer in the state, 28 hospitals. I mean, we're talking about an organization that with the hospital was in the tens of thousands of employees. So I assume lot, this is at least a seven figure job. Yes. Well, let's put it this way. It, it'll be it'll be at seven figure or, or above. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, many some of your universities may be five and ten million. Uh, most of your land grant universities probably are going to be in this eight hundred to one point four million dollar range, I believe. And you throw in the hospital responsibility as well. Exactly, exactly. Bill? Yeah, a couple of questions uh, and a, co a comment. Uh, I've not met Dr. Lasky, but I know of her. I've been a graduate of the University of Iowa, so I followed her for over the years. A very, very impressive individual, and so I think you folks did well. Uh, a quick question, or two quick questions. One, uh, does the governor have any involvement at all in the selection process? Sure, same as you do. Okay, but I mean, he does not have uh, any more than what Maria and or I do. L legally, no. Okay. Uh, practically, uh, anybody is allowed to, you know, make suggestions, comment, uh, nominate names, encourage people. Um, but uh, the, the Board of Governors is independent here. Their decision will be independent. Uh, we appreciate and respect everything the governor does for our state and for our university. You know, so I'm sure that the governor is going to going to uh, suggest things, but those suggestions will basically go through Whit Kiefer. Okay, uh, all Th this will not be a political decision. Okay, yeah, uh, all universities are ranked in various various parameters. Uh, how attractive is WVU uh, for recruiting the uh, the top of the line as president. Well, I think top of the line is pretty broad, and I know it's. No, a, I'm it, thinking do they fall in the category of the Harvard, MIT, uh, Columbia, and the like. Well, I'm not sure that we necessarily want one of the Harvard or MIT yeah. or Columbia presidents <laughs> right now. So, so, so it, it, it's a great question, though, Bill. You have to find the niche, and you have to find. Yeah. So, if 
you know, we're a land grant university, one of the few in the country. Uh, we have a major, major healthcare system that's part of the university. So in my mind, we need to find somebody that has a skill set that understands the importance and guidance within the medical system. Uh, somebody that understands the mission of the land grant university. Uh, somebody that owns, understands a small state where you have uh, several very good schools in the state, including Shepherd and Marshall, but we have one major land grant university. So, so you have to find the right niche. If, if somebody could be a great uh, president at Princeton, and if they don't have an in-depth medical system, they probably wouldn't be qualified, and they wouldn't be a good fit for us. So, it's probably like recruiting a football pl uh, player. You you need to find uh, a person that meets the needs of this particular job and and so and that's one of the things we're looking for the public from if the public thinks this is important this is a quality that we need to be in a president but i think it's obvious that we need somebody that can deal with land grant universities work work with somebody that's been with a major hospital system uh and, and then an, an and then the normal day-to-day -day operations of the university good answer so so talk a little bit rick about some of the challenges i mean we've all read um, some of the issues that Dr. Gee and the administration have had to deal with lots, not lots of, but cuts in programs, um, cuts in uh, different kinds of um, majors. Um, what play will that have in recruiting someone who clearly will have done their homework and seen some of the challenges that, that the university has faced recently? Well, that's one of the reasons that um, President Gee was willing to take a one-year extension. We were in this uh, reinventing the university for several years. Uh, then the COVID hit that made it so very complicated because we couldn't get a good grip on our numbers of students that we were going to have if it was a temporary drop. And so we'd been in, a, in Gordon Gee likes to be great in certain areas. I mean, our hospital system emphasizes four major areas now. And uh, one's the heart and vascular, uh, of course, the cancer. So we want to be great in certain areas. I mean, our engineering is outstanding. Our mining engineering and petroleum engineering is outstanding. So we were renovating. Now, part of that was cutting courses that were not in big demand, that didn't have many people in it. So that's been in process three or four or five years. And one of the things to do was to let Gordon Gee finish that process along with the support of the Board of Governors. So you didn't want to bring somebody in, a new president, in that transition. Now that that's over, I, I think it makes it much more ideal for us. And by the way, we have four new majors we're looking to expand uh, or start. Uh, so it wasn't just we were getting rid of courses that in today's world weren't needed, and now we're expanding in, in, in others. Do you know those four majors, Rick? Um, we, yes, we, we are uh, we're expanding the cyber security. Um, a lot is in the um, medical and science fields that tie with WVU. Um, one is physics. We have a great outstanding physics professor and so you know we're exploring those certain areas to grow with that that are popular uh, so so i think the fact that we've taken these steps and by the way that i get every day the chronicle of higher education there are at least three universities that are closing every week mostly smaller schools and universities but we have taken the steps that are the leaders in this issue where there's a drop off in the number of available college going age persons in this country. And Gordon Gee gets calls every day from people facing this same issue. I mean, whether it's the University of Arizona, uh, whether it's Rutgers, whether it's Penn State, uh, whether it's Shepherd. I mean, Shepherd's had a drop in their, their enrollment and they've done a great job handling that. And I know that uh, the president there and President Gee have, have worked together. So, so now, in answer to your question, I think we're in a good shape. I think that hiring a new president now is in a, in a good position, so he doesn't or she doesn't have to face that uh, that transition. 
Rick recently, uh, uh, 60 Minutes, had a uh, spot on some of the work been done at WVU in case of Alzheimer's and drug abatement and the like. How much has this carried over to the recognition, the prestige, and the funding coming to the university? Uh, the, the leader of that is Dr. Ali Raza. Uh, Gordon Gee recruited him from Ohio State. He is a remarkable person. Uh, it is great public relations overall, just like a top 10 football team is. But uh, from public relations point of view, I can compare the two. But from the importance in the world, what, what he's doing there is remarkable. We are having they, – they increase the staff at the hospital there in that area. They're having people trying to get into his studies and into the – processes that they're doing with the deep brain stipulation from all over the world, all over the world. I mean, they, they have a backlog of people wanting to do that. So overall, that's helped tremendously with the hospital system, the university, and, and all those things help indirectly with enrollment, too. Yeah. Uh, this is a comment. I want to go back to what you said earlier about uh, uh, Dr. Gee has been uh, an outstanding president for the WVU. I share that. I uh, also share the fact that with anybody of that much visibility there's going to be critics we've had one of our delegates that were criticizing his air travel we've had criticism of the way the building and the the uh, the department but through it all through it all i've never seen him personalize it it's he's always been above the fray and to me that speaks a great deal of his character and his willingness to be focused on doing the right job well, the only people that don't have criticism are the people that don't do anything. Yeah. And he's not afraid to make yeah. decisions, and he's not afraid to be visible. And, uh, yeah. Well, and especially with students. I mean, he's still, you know, all those selfies that that get taken, whether they're at football games or downtown somewhere on a Friday night. I mean, he is definitely um, – within the parameters of the student body as well. So. He, he goes out one night almost every weekend, either Friday or Saturday, and goes to nightclubs or here or there or anywhere else with, with the students, or he'll cruise along, and if students are walking back, he and he'll, he'll give them a ride home, and he'll, he'll... Have a conversation. I mean, I, I'm getting old for that, going into the bars and nightclubs and stuff, but, but uh, and, and President Gee, as you probably know, he does not drink whatsoever. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, he, 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 I think he is well liked by the students and uh, and is, is very involved and yeah. engaged. Rick Pill is our guest here on the program. Rick, President Smith over at Marshall uh, is positioning them for tech and they're uh, starting to build a reputation there. Uh, is there a good relationship between Marshall and WVU? Best relationship I've seen in my involvement with West Virginia University. Why do you think that is? Well, you have two dynamic leaders. Um, uh, President Smith just loves West Virginia, and Gordon Gee loves West Virginia. They'll both live here the rest of their lives. They want things to work. Uh, the world's a little more complicated now. I mean, when I went to school,